What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the RA Visuals YouTube channel where you'll always find high quality visuals and high quality tech. And today we're going to go back in time again to check out one of the most popular graphics cards Nvidia has ever made, the GTX 1060 6 gigabyte. That's right, we're talking about the real deal 1060 this time, the Steam Hardware Survey People's Champ, and the big brother to the annoying little brother, the 1060 3 gig. We'll be putting the 1060 6 gig through the gaming gauntlet just like we did with the 3 gig version and see what kind of performance you can expect from it in 2023. And also answer the question, should you still buy this card if you're a gamer on a budget? So let's hear a word from our sponsor and we'll hop right into it. Stop overpaying for Windows 10 and 11 activation keys. <laughs> With VIP URCD key, you can install and activate Windows for only 16 bucks. Hey, that's pretty good. It's fast, easy, and 100% legit. To get started, head over to VIPURCDKey.com and search for the software that you're looking for and add it to your cart. If you're installing Windows, be sure that the key you purchase is the same as what is installed on your system. Once your product is in the cart, you can now enter my new promo code for 2023, RAV25, which will now save you 25% on your purchase. From here, you just need to follow the prompts and purchase your key with your preferred payment method. I personally always choose PayPal. Once your payment is done, navigate to your user center and click on My I purchased orders. This is where you'll find your activation code once your payment is processed. From here, it's as easy as copying your key from the user center and pasting it into the Windows activation page on your desktop. You'll now have a fully activated version of Windows 10 that is also upgradable to a Windows 11 if you want. So check out the links below and save yourself some money. Now, let's get back to the video. The GeForce GTX 1060 6GB originally launched on July 19th, 2016, utilizing the GP106 graphics processor featuring 1280 CUDA cores, 80 texture mapping units, and 48 ROPs. It launched at $249, which was and still is a very reasonable price point for gamers and was one of the many reasons this card dominated the market for so long. For many years, the GTX 1060 presented unbeatable performance and value for the money, and it actually dominated the Steam hardware survey since 2017, but now it has finally been dethroned recently by the GTX 1650. Yeah, I know, I'm confused about that one too. But if you wanna see how the 1650 performs with the same system we're testing today and kinda of put it against the video we're doing today, go ahead and click up here because I already did a video on that. So the question I'm asking today is, should this card still be the budget king and does it still deserve to be on top of the Steam hardware survey and possibly even deserve a spot in your budget PC you may be building right now? Let's test some games and find out. Okay guys, so we have our same test system as last time featuring the i5-12400F, our MSI B660 mortar motherboard, 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 3600 megahertz, the GTX 1060 6 gigabyte, of course, a 750 watt power supply, and an MSI 240 millimeter AIO to keep the CPU cool. And kicking off our testing with Overwatch 2, we were able to get ourselves a nice and steady 156 average FPS, which provided some really smooth gameplay and didn't show any crazy stutters or anything like that that would affect my game's performance so it was a really good showing from the 1060 6 gigabyte now moving over to diablo 2 resurrected and this is where the 1060 6 gig really showed up and showed out against its annoying little brother the 3 gig version uh getting ourselves a average fps of 90 this time so that's about 20 fps higher than what we got with the 3 gig and this is starting to make me wonder does Diablo 2 Resurrected take advantage of VRAM? And I think it probably does at these settings. And next up on our list at medium low settings in 1080p, of course, is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And we were able to get ourselves an average FPS of 130 in multiplayer. And that actually carried over pretty well to Warzone because we were able to grab ourselves an average FPS of 110 in Warzone as well, which is a lot better than what the three gig version of this card was able to do at the exact same settings. So very good showing from the 6 gig and again this shows you why maybe having a little bit extra VRAM and that one extra streaming multiprocessor might actually translate to some better performance in games. And next we hopped into Apex Legends at 1080p low settings and in this game we were able to get ourselves a very competitive 132 FPS average over the course of the run and this is a game where you could actually maybe bump up your settings a little bit unless you're really looking to completely max out your performance you know for for esports and whatever but the GTX 1060 here maxed out this game 
game at 144 for a lot of the run and only saw dips pretty much when a lot of action was happening on the screen so it was a very good showing from the card okay and doom eternal was a fun one for this card because if you guys remember the three gig version of this card we were only able to get 83 fps and we were only able to play at the low setting of this game but with the six gig version of this card we were able to crank up the settings all the way to high and we were still able to get an average fps of 95 at high settings so definitely a much better match for this game with a six gig card and again this shows to show you that a lot of new modern games are taking advantage of more vram if you want to crank up the settings a little bit all right moving on over to fortnite and it seems that in this game the GTX 1060 really, really likes this game because for a lot of the time, the frame rate was way over 200 FPS, as you guys can see in the run right now. But as an average FPS, we were able to get 195 over the course of this game that we played right here. And guys, this completely owned the three gig version of this card once again, as to be expected, like by like 30 FPS or something like that. So again, it show, goes to show you that uh, the six gig reigns supreme when it comes to this game as well. Okay, and I also plan to show you guys Red Dead Redemption 2 because I know this game is going to have quite the bit of improvement over the three gig version which was barely even able to play it without artifacting the reason i wasn't able to really show you guys is because the benchmark it all of a sudden started doing this glitch where it wouldn't actually benchmark and the FPS was like half of what it should be. But either way, we're just going to leave the benchmark out of today's video. But you guys could probably expect with the proper settings, you can easily hit 60 FPS in this game at 1080p with this card. And if you guys are somewhat skeptical about that, here is Cyberpunk 2077 at medium settings using AMD FSR 2.1 at 1080p. And in the in-game benchmark, we were able to get a nice and smooth 63 FPS and translating that over into the actual game itself we are able to get ourselves a solid 60 fps even in an area where we are just like fighting a ton of enemies and having a lot of fun so again this game requires you know very similar hardware and specs to run as red dead redemption 2 so you can expect very similar results from both games and another surprising one for me was the witcher 3 wild hunt enhanced edition running at medium settings with amd fsr 2.0 on auto and we were able to get ourselves an average fps of about 93 in this run right here here, and that even translated to when we were in combat and everything like that so guys the 1060 really likes this game as well because with the 3 gig version of this card we were only able to get like 63 average fps on this so very very good showing from the 6 gig version and now finally the last test is going to be hogwarts legacy the brand new game that just released running at 1920 by 1080 on medium settings this time not low medium and we were able to use amd fsr on the quality preset as well and now you can see right here when we do our Hogsmeade stress test, we were able to just get right under 60 FPS. And that is because I had Nvidia's reflex on the on plus boost setting and I didn't even realize it, which actually does decrease FPS a little bit if you are not CPU bound, which we are not right now. So I believe if I would have ran this correctly, we probably would be over 60 FPS. Uh, but either way, even with that on, you can see that we are still getting 57, 58 while we're going through one of the most highly populated and stressful areas of the game right here. So again, the FPS is going to vary in this game depending on where you are, but I like to stress test this area because it's a good indicator of like what the lowest case scenario is going to be for your FPS. So you guys, this card can actually still play a brand new game like this, so it's looking very, very good. Okay, so what can we draw from our benchmark results? Well, clearly the GTX 1066 gig still has plenty of life left in it, and it seriously can deliver top notch gaming performance at 1080p while allowing gamers to actually push up the details a bit for a sharper gaming experience versus the cut down 3 gig version which could barely do things at low settings a lot of the times. Even in a brand new game like Hogwarts Legacy, this card failed to disappoint and can easily achieve a solid 60 FPS with the proper mix of settings and with help from AMD's FSR 2.0. I think that it's just a testament to how popular this card is and why I constantly see people telling me that they're currently using one of these to this day. Another huge draw of this card is because it has a low power draw, giving you GTX 980-like performance at half the power draw rated at 120 watts maximum, which actually makes this card a very good candidate to drop in a super budget system like a Dell Optiplex or a Precision Workstation without having to switch out the stock power supply at all. I actually tested this myself on numerous occasions. If you guys or OGs of the channel, you probably know about these videos, and the card performed flawlessly even with that stock power supply. Now, what do you guys think? 
Is this card still worthy of a spot at the top of the Steam hardware survey? Or do you think there are better options out there now in 2023 at the price point? Speaking of that, if you're not afraid to grab one of these on the used market, these can be had for like $100 or less all day long. And again, that makes it very hard to pass up. So as always, tell me your thoughts down in the comments below and let me know if you're one of the gamers in the Visuals Fam community still gaming on one of these cards right here. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button and absolutely smack the subscribe button so you can see more of my content like this one today. Anyway, that's it for this one. You guys have an awesome day and I'll catch you guys in the next video.